I want to dive into your life in living in Germany. What are some of the challenges you have experienced as an African and also as a Christian living in Germany? <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm Esther and today I have a lovely friend here. Her name is Marion and she was born in Germany, went to Ghana for a short while and came back to Germany. So today I'm going to ask her questions surrounding her life, experience, living in Germany and in Ghana. So Marion, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Esther. Thank you. Me. Thank you. Thank you for honoring this invitation. It has been a long time coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has been busy, like the back and forth trying to find a date. <laughs> but yeah, we finally made it. Yeah. So, Marion, can you give us a little introduction about yourself? <laughs> sure. Um, okay, yeah. So, my name is Marion. I was born here in Germany. Um, and then at the age of, let's say, maybe four or five, I can't really recall. My parents took us back home, mm -hmm. me and my siblings took us back home to Ghana, to school. And then I came back here after my SHS in Ghana wow. to further my education. Yeah. So that's just a little bit about myself. Okay. So, but when you were here, did you learn the language a bit? before going to Ghana? Yeah, so when I was here, we went to school a bit, like kindergarten. So we were able to speak a bit mm. of the German. But then when I went back to Ghana, I spent like almost 10 years. Wow. So when I was in Ghana, yeah. I couldn't speak a word German. So, but when mm. I came back here, I went to a language school. Mm -hmm. And then for the way maybe others would pick the language, for me it was quite faster because mm. I had some experience with the language already yeah. so it was quite fast for me to catch up on the language again. No, okay. Okay, so when you went to Ghana you were very young. So you do, do you have some memories of your time in Ghana during that period? When I was little. Mm, yeah. Um yeah I think yeah I have a few and I quite remember that like, when they were taking us to Ghana, I, I, I quite remember I was actually really excited. I don't know why, <laughs> but I was actually really excited. Yeah. And yeah, when I, we went, okay, what I recall it was that I couldn't really speak tree that well. So anywhere you go and you speak tree, they'll say, they'll be laughing they'll at be you. They'll be laughing. That hey, your tree is not good, your tree is not good. Yeah. So that's what, what, those are some of the things I recall. Yeah. Yeah, but for now my now my tree is it's, it's better yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. so when you came after your secondary school from ghana coming to germany what was the experience like it was new everything was new for me yeah. even though like i mentioned in the beginning even though i was born here still uh, when I stepped out of the plane, everything was new in the language. I couldn't hear anything. Wow. Like, I couldn't hear what they were saying. Wow. Everything was new, like the environment, surrounding, the roads. Everything looked so fresh and new. And yeah, that was my first like cultural shock. Okay. Like, I realized, oh, okay, now I'm in a totally different place. Yeah. yeah. So, how were you able to maybe pick up, or did your parents? kind of tell you this is what you're about to experience so you were prepared to experience them or how were you able to face all mm -hmm. these challenges i wouldn't say no they didn't really um <laughs> prepare me for anything okay. they didn't like also <laughs> no they just said oh if you come then you come and learn the language but they didn't say oh it's going to be like when you come now you will not hear anything and, mm. Like they didn't prepare, you know African parents, they yeah. won't prepare for anything. <laughs> they just come and face it like yeah. you have to fight your way through, yeah. So they didn't I wasn't prepared for anything. Okay. Yeah. So when you came here after your secondary school, did you go directly to the university route or, mm, or no. you repeated your secondary school again? Mm, so when I came when I finished SHS in Ghana, um then I came here I did like um, 10 to 1 year German course 
Um, and then after that, um, you have to do like a one year college. Mm. Yeah, you do a one year college because the mm-hmm. WASI, you know, the WASI is not assess- uh, accepted here in oh, okay. Germany. So, especially from Ghana, mm. some other countries they accept it, but from Ghana they don't accept it. Mm. So, I had to do first, uh, like, let's say, let's say one year German course one year uh, the college okay. and after the college you write uh, an exam mm-hmm. and the college is in german mm-hmm. you do like german math uh, wow. chemistry physics uh, wow. and, yeah some other courses and then you write a final exam and then you are allowed to study mm-hmm. in a german university and was it yeah. was it difficult well <laughs> Yeah, it's not that, um, I wouldn't say it's that easy that you can relax and you have to put in effort. It was really demanding, especially when it's getting close to the exam. It's really, the final, final exam is really, really demanding because some of the subjects are totally different. Yeah. Even though like mass, they teach mass here, they teach mass in Ghana. The level, the standard is totally different, yeah, and you really have to put in the effort. The effort, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So I, I want to go back to before coming to Ghana. What were the misconceptions? I know maybe you googled or mm-hmm. you, you kind of wanted to know what you yeah, are yeah. coming to face. What were some of the misconceptions you saw online mm-hmm. or you were told? And you come in here, was it confirmed or it wasn't, it was just yeah. not a, or not So, true. yeah, so definitely, <laughs> when I, let me put it like this, so when I knew that I was going to come to Germany, you know, mm. I told a few friends that, oh, I'll be going to Germany, I won't be staying in Ghana with you guys, unfortunately. And then, you know, when, when anybody hears of Germany, the first thing is racism <laughs> and the language <laughs> yeah. barrier. So those were the things that I was kind of looking at. Okay, how am I going to cope with these things? Uh, uh, racism, because yeah, yeah, and also the language barrier. Those were the things that kind of frightened me. Mm. Mm, yeah, I would say. No, okay, but when you came here, yeah. and then when I came, so I haven't really um, experienced like um, how should I say really direct racism mm-hmm. in, in my face like yeah maybe just some kind of light yeah. ones but yeah. i think everybody is something that everybody experiences <laughs> maybe you go to a supermarket and the cashier doesn't want to put the money into your hands yeah. or i don't know also if that is a racism or she does it to everybody <laughs> <laughs> or she doesn't say hello to you the black person but yeah. says hello to them yeah those maybe those minor things but yeah. aside that, I haven't like experienced any harsh kind of racism. racism. So after your um, secondary school, mm. so did you kind of plan what course you wanted to study or during your, um, <laughs> <laughs> your uh, how should I say, your exams? Yeah. That was when you saw maybe this is your strength, let me focus on this mm. or what was the plan? So yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> Actually, I initially I wanted to study architecture way, from way back in Ghana and I also I also had that in tech. Okay. But then my parents were like, No, it's not a good course after that you are not going to get a job and all that. <laughs> so when I was coming here, I didn't have any um like course at heart that I wanted to study because what I really truly wanted to do was the architecture. Mm. So, okay, my second kind of course that I wanted to do was maybe um, IT. Okay. But then also here too, my parents had a plan that no, you have to do either, uh, they were mentioning something like pharmacy or electrical engineering. Mm. Mm. So, okay, I went through the college and the good thing also about the college is that they kind of introduced you to some of the subjects that you'll be doing later in the um, university. Mm-hmm. So I had a feel of IT, a bit of 
IT, the IT subject, and I realized that no, nah, it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I had a bit of feel of the electrical engineering because in the mm. physics we did a lot of. That was crazy. We did a lot of uh, this kind of electrical. I also realized now nah, that's it's yeah. not for me. So, yeah. So when it's getting to the end of the college, you know, and then you have to start up applying to the university and choosing the courses mm-hmm. and for my parents they were like you are going to choose electrical <laughs> engineering so yeah. i said i actually funny enough i i went to when i went to submit the form i chose electrical engineering wow. but i don't know how but something just told me that some few days later i went back to the school and told them that nah, i made a mistake <laughs> <laughs> and then i submitted um a new form with a new course uh, which is environmental engineering or environmental science and technology mm. which now i did oh. and funny enough i chose that because a friend chose that oh, okay and at that moment too i was really frustrated oh but there was one more course i had wanted to do mm. aside what my parents were saying that was um food and science technology yeah. or something yeah, I wanted to do that and I told my mom about it but she said no that one took no job blah blah it's no. bad so I was so frustrated I was like I don't know what to do I don't want to do electrical engineering because it's a tough course yeah. so I asked my friend hey you chose this environmental thing I was like Gee. so he told me a bit about it I said okay fine I will just go with that <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I ended up choosing that course yeah and well, funny enough, I I have grown to mm-hmm. like, like the course, the okay. and yeah, I feel that it also really matches. Like I just like it, yeah. Okay. I just like it. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I came up with my course. <laughs> yeah. So I want to dive into your life in living in Germany. Mm-hmm. What are some of the challenges you have experienced? First of all, maybe as an African and also as a Christian living in Germany. Mm, okay. Let's start with the African, as an African challenges. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, like I said before, I've not really experienced like direct or any harsh form of racism. And then maybe a challenge, I don't know if it's a challenge, but then um, let's say maybe you go to, even in, or in school, in the uni, <laughs> mm-hmm. in the class, mostly you are just the only black person. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you feel like, oh, there were like a group of black people you could mm-hmm. hang out with. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mostly you are only the only black person. Yeah. That's, it's kind of sad sometimes yeah. because yeah it's kind of also difficult for the germans to mingle with you mm-hmm. because they are also just with themselves mm-hmm. so unless maybe there's another african or there's another um person from a different yeah. country like a, a foreigner then you can easily it's easy for you guys to interact or come together mm-hmm. yeah so Maybe those are some of the challenges so far. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I can't think of any serious issue I face. Yeah, okay. And then as a Christian, it will be um <laughs> as a Christian a challenge. Uh, how would you define a, a challenge, challenge as a Christian? Mm. I can really... Okay, a challenge as a Christian. Okay, for me, I would say that um, I was brought up in a Christian home. I was privileged yeah. to um, have my parents sending me to church almost every Sunday. So that was kind of like what I saw Sundays to be. Yeah. But in Germany, some people work on Sundays. You know, mm-hmm. and sometimes it is optional, but some professions like doctors, nurses, it's, you have no option. You have to take care of patients. So you have no option but to sometimes work on Sundays. But some people work on Sundays to earn more money, mm-hmm. you know. So as a Christian, you might say, oh, I mean Sundays. So for us, maybe that was what I was 
brought up with it doesn't mean i should continue that path you can decide to also maybe neglect yeah, your worship or sunday okay. church service and go to mm. work and also your community mm. in africa i see most people go to church you know but here in germany everyone is kind of like in their own apartment mm. so if someone is going to church you don't really see them because no more no for me what i've seen is that no so many people that i live with are christians or go to church yeah, so true. you have to decide that i want to go to church you don't have to wait that oh let let me see maybe i'll be encouraged by someone going to church or someone will knock mm. on my door yeah and let's go to church you know yeah. so as a christian i'll say that you have to be firm in your faith and say that i am i want to pursue god for myself not yeah. that i want to be encouraged it's true before i will pursue god yeah it's true but funny enough I find it kind of funny that, like, I would say since I came here, is this is where the place where I grew closer. I had like a relationship oh. with God and became kind of more serious with my work with God, because I wouldn't say in Ghana I was more more religious. <laughs> Just going to church, come back home. But here, mm. I don't know if it's also because of maybe. I I always say my uni life was a struggle. Maybe because <laughs> of my struggle, which brought me closer to God. Mm. But yeah, I think he, this place rather brought me closer to God. That's nice. And yeah, yeah. And my parents, uh, 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 when I came here, my father already was going to a church. With, mm -hmm. So when I came, I just joined his church. So I didn't also really struggle finding, maybe if he wasn't in any church, maybe it would, the beginning would have been a bit difficult to find, oh, which church now will I go to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, and also, yeah, when I came, I think I've been able to surround myself with quite some few good people who mm -hmm. also encouraged me. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I haven't really been challenge that much to mm -hmm. yeah, lose my faith or anything yeah that's true <laughs> although yeah. i'm not saying there are no uh, challenges here but yeah yeah <laughs> it, it, hmm. the, the, the thing is about conviction like if you yourself you've accepted god like you know that wherever no matter any circumstance i will still go to church or something because sometimes even in ghana i usually go for church service and someone asks me ah why do you always come to church you mm. know it's about you yourself going to church or you yourself having a relationship with god and in here here to you definitely face some challenges that might discourage you i've been yeah. discouraged several times not to go to church sometimes yeah. i'll be upset like oh goodness like what is it why is this happening, happening to, me? to me i don't want to go to church then the holy spirit will just speak to me like just go yeah. and so I, I, what i'll say is that in that circumstance when i go to church i receive a word that encourages me yes. you know so it's just it's just you having a personal relationship and not you joining a group or thinking that you'll be encouraged to go to church mm -hmm. or have a relationship with god people are going through a lot yeah and what are some of the challenges you've heard that people are going through and what advice will you give to anyone who wants to come <laughs> to Germany so that they can prepare themselves properly not to maybe go into that temptation mm. or yeah be, be prepared even if you go into it you know how to come out from it yeah mm, challenges well honestly the only thing that comes into my mind right now is maybe uh, financial problems because mm. some of them come especially for the international students yeah like um, when they come I don't know if maybe the f the funds are not that enough or like their parents just provide the or they just the make pro yeah they just also they just make provision for maybe just the block account mm -hmm. and then that's it and then when they come they realize that oh but if i pay uh, rent 400 and i pay uh health insurance mm -hmm. i don't know, 150 or something and i pay this 
this and I pay that, then in the end, there's nothing left yeah. for me. Yeah. So, yeah, those are kind of the problems that I, I realize some of these students are facing. So maybe before you come, you have to find out, oh, how much am I going to spend on this? How much will I spend on yeah. that? And then you and your parents or whatever, when you come here, you find out how you can get a job. Um, yeah, yeah, kind of schedule yourself so that after school you kind of have it's time true. for a job so that you can also uh, yeah. fend for yourself. And, yeah, yeah, you, you re really raised a, a, a valid <laughs> point because like you don't understand the situation be maybe sometimes before you are about to enter it or if you are not in that situation you don't really understand mm. what the person is going through yeah the blocked account looks like so much money mm. but it's you are always taking, taking money out of it so it's nothing is replacing it if you don't maybe have a part-time job or yeah. you have another source of income so mm. the the point you raise is very very valid yeah. you know and if you you are you, you don't get a job in time and if it finishes you know mm. you, you 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 struggle yeah with um living yeah. in germany yeah yeah and also maybe one more thing is the language they yeah. have problems going to like these kind of offices because of language barrier when they get a letter they don't understand it yeah and they can't go move around yeah that much because of language barrier so maybe i would say that also, before you come, you can take some courses in wherever you are coming from, Ghana, yeah. Nigeria. <laughs> so that when you come, at least you will be a bit more, you it's will true. not shake so much. <laughs> or when you come also here, yeah, you can still go to a language school and try and integrate yourself yeah. in the system. Before coming here, I would advise you that, a, a friend actually told me this advice some time ago that, before he was coming here, he actually called or researched on students that have offered, that have gone through his course or that studied mm. his course, looked yeah. at the percentage of people who have been employed after they graduate, mm. and he saw that this course is not going so, to land him yeah. in any employment oh, in Ghana. And that was an amazing advice. Yeah. So he said that he, he was coming here was to get the opportunity to be here mm. and when he came here he knew what courses that were um that employment was readily mm. available mm. you know and and that point was very very it was yeah, it was a I good think, advice yeah, that's also a very valid point like before you come here check like um do some research on the course you are coming to take and yeah. the job market and all of that yeah yeah <laughs> because it's, it's not easy even though people will say that um mm -hmm. like germany there are vacancies here it is mm -hmm. true but you will be surprised that why are they not always being filled if people want jobs in germany like mm -hmm. people want to work in germany but there are certain requirements that you need to have before you are employable to them so you just have to make your research to know that either you are employable or you're, there's employment readily available for whatever course you are coming to do here, you know. Because yeah, without finances, you can't stay here happily. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to pay health insurance. And it's not like Africa, at least you sleep in your parents' home. You have to pay rent, yeah. you know, groceries, fine. People are kind, but how, how long are you going to receive this kind gestures from your friends you know mm. so without finances you are you will struggle here in germany so you just have to look at that aspect before coming here yeah yes yeah. good point for students who want to come to germany to study yeah like we spoke about earlier on i'll just say that um do some research about the course you want to take how the job market like and also i'll say um if you have the chance to learn the language a bit or even up to like B1, just do it in your home country before you come. Mm -hmm. Because also most of the unis are, the courses are offered in in German, especially if you don't want to go to a private university and pay so much money mm -hmm. and you want to go um, enjoy like the free tuition which is available here, mm -hmm. then you have to make, uh, be ready to learn the language yeah and yeah and then also do it's all about research research yeah. research research how much 
do I need to spend on for food? How much do I need to spend on rent? How much do I need to spend on, yeah, like transportation? Just research, where am I going to sleep? Accommodation, all that. I'll just tell you to do research. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I'll say. Yeah. And, okay, so you've answered all these questions. I want us to dive a little into um, Christian life. Yeah. You know, um, as we all know that we are all here individually for a purpose. You are me. You may be here for a purpose, like renting this apartment for a purpose and everything. But as a Christian, what do you think other Christians should do to help them identify their purpose and be focused on it? To say that you can purpose once I know. I know. The purpose is there. So your question is how. What will I tell Christians who want to find a purpose or like? Yeah. For me, what I was saying is, uh, is st- spend time with, with God, have a true relationship, get to know His Word. What is His Word saying about your life? And spend more time like in prayer and also with the Holy Ghost. Be sensitive to His His voice, and through that. That's the only way, like, he alone can tell you where to go, what not to do, what uh, what to do. I think that's how you can um, know your purpose. Mm. It's just by spending time with God and he will tell you. Yeah. And yeah, you, like, honestly, or honestly um, seeking, seeking God. Mm. I think that's it. For me, that's how I believe yeah. he can reveal it to you. But what do you think? Okay, so hmm, for for this question, um, I would say that for the reason why God created us was for us to love Him, to serve Him, and mm-hmm. to worship Him. Yeah, and like that is the main or that is the foundation for every Christian. You know, to know or to help you identify your your specific purpose because some people can are brought here to fill in the gaps for instance to mm-hmm. be a pastor or yeah. to be or to help the homeless like we all have different different purposes for which god has brought us here to do but for us to identify what purpose um or your specific purpose for which god brought you here to do i think that is what you have answered that you have to spend mm-hmm. more time with him and as human beings, God has blessed us with some talent, you know, like some people, when someone teaches you or explains something to you, it is so smooth, you know, like there are certain talents I believe are associated with your purpose here on earth. Some people can sing and minister and like they change people's, um, I don't know, mental state from sadness to joy. So it's just about you spending time with God. God will definitely minister himself to mm-hmm. you when you are more with him or spending more time with him and you are you, you are obedient to his word, you know. No one wants a disobedient child. Yeah. And yeah, I think you've answered it all. Spending yeah. time and with him and everything. Okay, for right now, what is going on in this world? What advice or what do you think Christians should be careful of so that they don't sway away from the path God has brought them here to, mm. to fulfill. Well, that, yeah, it's also a <laughs> good question. Well, okay, first you mentioned that, uh, what is going on. Like, what, can you explain? Explain. Like, Some, what hmm. you say, what is going on in the world, as in, yeah, oh, I want you to elaborate. Maybe. Okay, from what I have seen, I've seen that people interpret their the Bible to satisfy their own situations. Even though, for instance, the Bible says, "Do not steal," mm. but someone will say, "Ah, but I was angry or hungry or maybe I felt like this will look good on me," and you feel like, "Ah, if it makes me feel good, why shouldn't I steal?" You know, but the Bible is very strict on these things. So I. 
now the world is kind of like wants to soften or kind of water down the word of god and mm. that is so in your face that if you are not if as a human being we like we are we are still in our flesh even, yeah. even though we are not of the flesh we are still living in, in, in yeah in our bodies so there are certain temptations that may want you to sway away from the word of god mm. and right now social media almost everything has made it so in your face like everywhere you go it's so much in your face that if you are not careful you might um want to deviate because you want to satisfy the flesh if you are not very strong or have that self-control you know mm, so yeah. as a christian yeah so that's what mm, i get it i need it for me i always say that um yeah we have we f- tend to feed our flesh so much that is why it always wants more 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 yeah and now the spirit man is so is is quiet yeah so in order to like water down all these worldly desires you know we have to go back to our bible read, read our bible spend time with with god and that's the only way we will feed we that is how actually we feed the, our spirit mm-hmm. for it to become stronger mm-hmm. for it to even quiet or how mm-hmm. do you say mm-hmm. silence the mm-hmm. the desires of our flesh, flesh. Yeah. so yeah i mean what is written? <laughs> they say what is written is written. We, if the Bible says do not steal, we cannot um, do otherwise. But if truly you want to, you are battling with obeying mm-hmm. the Bible, then you have to, like I said, water down the desires mm. of the flesh and feed more of your spirit so that your spirit will stand, will, will grow. The spirit is the only thing that would obey. Mm-hmm. Like our inner, I believe that our inner spirit, our spirit always wants to yearns for God and always wants to um, please God. But it's, it's the flesh that is always fighting. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what I believe. So, and yeah, in order to overcome this world, it's only by the word of God. Yeah. And feeding, like I said, feeding our spirit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that's that's the all that I would like to ask you. But I I know there will definitely be a part two with another topic we'll discuss. <laughs> yeah. So I want to know your final words about the first part of our questions and also the second part and also anything you like to <laughs> share, or you can combine them if you want. To. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I want to end with. Is. Yeah, I mean, uh, we spoke a lot about school, about people who want to come here and Christianity, so, and the challenges that you face. I would say if you want to come here, as a, let me, yeah, I'm a Christian, so as a Christian, if you want to come here, do your research, do everything that we said in the video, and come here, and then when you come here, also, don't, I know I, I've ha- had a couple of friends who, when they come here they later on say oh there's no god mm. yeah i don't know if it's the science too much science technology going on here mm. they come and say later on nah, i don't believe in god anymore but yeah if you come here still just keep the faith find a, a church that you think will make you grow in the spirit mm. surround your, yourself with people who are like-minded christian who are, are also christians and will help you to grow in the faith and yeah <laughs> that's what yeah. i would end with yeah thank you so so much marion <laughs> for this time that um it's it's really nice to have this time with you to share words of nuggets or nuggets of wisdom <laughs> with you and um i really appreciate it yeah thanks for having me (laughs) (laughs) yeah so this is it guys don't forget to like subscribe and don't forget people who are amazing help others to be amazing thank you